As she walked down the street where she lived, she was breaking off pieces of cake and handing them out to her neighbours and to the outstretched hands of the children. She took one bite herself and her eyes went wide in terror. She knew something was horribly wrong. On the 23rd of June 1828, a young boy had spent the last few hours playing in the filthy cobbled streets of Ancoats. And he was now walking back home along the side of the bustling canal that fed the mills the raw materials and took away the finished product. The city was always so loud and filthy. He carried on walking while he watched the men unload coal from a big barge when he noticed a woman standing in front of him. The young lad stopped but was ready to run down one of the side streets just in case the one was about to accuse him of something, as it was far better to vanish into the dark alleys of the city than try and voice your innocence. The mysterious lady walked closer to the boy. She smiled and introduced herself as Miss McCann and asked him if he was a good boy and would he like to do a little job for her. Unsure, he asked what the job might be. Still smiling, she told him that it wasn't too difficult. She just needed him to take this fruit cake from her and deliver it to a friend of hers, a Mr. Drummond. Mr. Drummond was a dealer in flour and provisions and he lived on a street further down the canal on Richmond Street. The young lad thought the proposition over for a moment, but as soon as the lady offered him two sixpences for his trouble, he eagerly agreed. He took the heavy fruit cake from the lady and tucked it under his arm and made his way down the busy street, darting through the people, skirting round the piles of goods and ropes, and he ran following the canal into the centre of Manchester. He saw a street sign for Richmond Street and ran across the cobbled road, looking out for horses and carts as he went. Making his way to the big wooden door of the house, he paused, just for a moment, rearranged his grip of the cake, and knocked on the heavy door. He waited, and then knocked again. After a moment, a lady came to the door. It was Drummond. The young boy handed her the cake and passed on the message he was told to say from Miss McCann and that the cake was a gift. Now Miss Drummond couldn't put her finger on it, but something about this just felt wrong. She kept trying to give the cake back to the young lad, telling him that she had never heard of a Miss McCann and nor had her husband. But the boy was insistent that the cake was for her and her family. And with that, he ran off down the street Miss Drummond stepped forward trying to catch him, but he was gone. Later that day, the boy arrived home and gave the two sixpences to his mother. She demanded to know where the money came from. He retold his story of the mysterious McCann and the fruit cake, and that he delivered it to Miss Drummond, but his mother was having none of it. Not believing his story, she believed he stole the money, and she made her son take him back to see Miss Drummond to confirm at least part of this story. On arriving at the house, Miss Drummond looked pleased to see the boy again and confirmed his story, but was still adamant that the cake was not for her or her husband. She handed it over to the boy's mother, asking her to keep it. Really happy with the day's fortunes, extra money for the household and free cake, the mother wanted to share her good fortunes on the way home. She started to break off chunks of cake, passing them out to friends and family. News got around pretty soon and she was mobbed by people with their hands out, particularly the local children. But things suddenly took a dark turn. As soon as people swallowed the cake, their mouth and throat started burning. It was like fire. People started coughing and choking, clawing at their necks. Soon afterwards, the crowd of people that was eating cake were now all violently being sick in the street. Doctors were called who came running down the cobbled streets. Two children and an elderly woman were transferred to the infirmary, where sadly, the youngest child, a four-year-old Susanna Rigby, would pass away. With this now being classed as a crime, the police had the cake tested, and it was discovered the fruit cake had been laced with arsenic, and even the smallest slice was enough to kill. Surgeons believe that the people had survived because they were so violently sick afterwards, expelling the poison from their stomachs. The police learnt of the story of the mysterious lady, Miss McCann, 
paying to have his poisonous cake delivered, and a massive manhunt was underway with her description in the papers as of being medium height, in a brown gown, a light coloured shawl and a black bonnet. She was also noted to have large front teeth. Another fact that was published was when Miss McCann had handed the boy this poison cake to deliver, she was holding a new baby in her arms. Despite the massive search, Miss McCann was never found. Police couldn't even confirm if that was her real name. It was speculated that the baby was that of her intended victim, Mr. Drummond, who had got her pregnant with an affair, but then failed to leave his wife, leaving her with the new baby and no support, and possibly ruining any relationship that she might have had. So in an act of revenge, she attempted to poison her ex-lover. Well, that'll do it for today. If you like that story, let me know in the comments below. My views on this story is quite sad that whatever reasons the poison was in that cake, it took the life of a small child. Also, I want to say thank you for all the messages. I love the fact that some of you go to the streets that I talk about and you listen to my stories on the sites they actually happened. Again, thank you and until next time, take care.